Hi, this is Rihanna. This title is called Sisters and Brothers Don't Clean Up Their Room. Hi, I'm Tate, and I'm going to be doing the story Tops and Bottoms by Janet Stevens. Um, I am Gerardo, and I will be saying the story of La Llorona. Hi, my name is and I'm going to be telling you the story, The Children and the Wasps. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Call me Ishmael. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. Once upon a time. Oh, hello there. Thanks for gathering around the fireplace with me for this story time. This is Heart of Utah, and I'm Colby Walker. Now, even though every story starts a different way, the basics still remain the same. Storytelling is something that we might not think of too often, but it's woven into the fabric of our humanity. We've been doing it for eons. It's how we share our knowledge and we build relationships. It's how we tackle big issues and make decisions. Storytelling is important. And that's why Weber State and the surrounding school districts are in their 25th year of holding their storytelling festival in Ogden. It was the first of its kind in the nation to put both elementary students and professionals on the same stage. And for students, it's teaching them important life skills. The Colorful Crown Box by Calais. Once upon a time, there was a crown box that did not get along. Red hated yellow because they both thought they were the color of the sun. And the it really is like this developing language art skills. They learn how to organize the elements of a story into a comprehensive presentation. So they're not only working on reading and writing skills, but they're working on presentation, speaking, listening, and working with an audience. The fun thing is I've watched uh, students participate from the time they were in first grade all the way until they're in fifth or sixth grade, and their stories become so incredible. In a land far, far away in Mexico, there was a little village with many people but one stood out among them all. Her name was Maria, and she was beautiful. And when I say beautiful, I mean beautiful. She was so gorgeous, and she knew this. She was so vain. So here's something that's She'd really become important in the last few years. As students become more virtual learners and remote learners, and social media plays a bigger part in their life. Learning how to tell a story or how to communicate their thoughts and their expression in a really open way has become almost a lost art. And so we have really wanted to be able to help storytellers understand this is a great way for you to tell how you're feeling or what's experienced, what you're experiencing or even be able to present information to other people in a way that's not scary. Because sometimes our students nowadays don't know how to communicate or talk with anyone unless it's on a virtual um, platform. And that's not the case for everyone, but we hope we're still building skills so that students can have those verbal communication tra traits that will pass down. Now, in addition to these kids getting the chance to hone their own thinking and communication skills, they also have a chance to hear from professional storytellers and widen their horizons. This story is a story that you all probably know. And it's especially for the little ones out there. This story is a kind of scary story. Ooh, but not too scary, just a little bit scary, just scary enough. You see, it starts on this, this mountain, this mountain that rose high up into the sky. There were rocks and boulders, stones, and towards the bottom there was scree, the detrius of the mountain, that shaly kind of stuff that when you try and climb up it, you find yourself sliding back, that kind of stuff. Having them connect with these storytellers and the chance to step out of what might be their own comfort zones really gives these kids a chance to find their voices and allows them a chance to grow. Usually the first time a student tells, they might start with something like a fairy tale. And this is the, a really fun progression I've seen over the last few years as the Weber State has progressed and the festival has grown. The, story, the student storytellers have developed their skills over time as well, even though they may only participate once or they may participate two, two or three or four times. I've seen the whole festival grow and increase. So we have um, students who will tell fairy tales. They might tell 
uh, a picture book, retell it in their own words. They might tell a family history story or something that they have been told over the years from grandparents or their dad or the mom. The stories that really are the best are the ones that the students come up with themselves and tell about an experience that they've had or they tell about um, something funny that happened to one of their parents and they put their play they put themselves in their place of their parents or of someone else that they are telling about. Now generally this whole festival takes place over the course of three days at the end of January but this year to celebrate 25 years of storytelling and because things happen to be the way they are right now the Weber State Storytelling Festival is holding 25 days of stories and right now we're smack dab in the middle of it and there are way too many good stories and way too many cute kids for me to fit all in this one video right here. So we're gonna have even more of this story all over on our website at kslewisradio.com. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to head over there and check it out. And with that, that just about does it for me here this week. For KSL News Radio's Heart of Utah, I'm Colby Walker. I'll see you right back here next week. Thanks for watching. The end. And, and that made me think, you know, where, where are my people from? You know, I've done my own genealogy and I'm stuck in Alabama in 1870. The Freedmen Bureau records is still have not cracked the nut on my own family history to be able to go back to get to what we say the water's edge, so to speak, for my people, right? When they came to America originally. I know my people are of African descent and, and somehow got to this nation. Um, but I've not been able to trace that back on paper. And so as I was in Africa, I was like, I need to know where I come from. Like, and the easiest simple way is through DNA.